Welcome. So good to be with you on this Wednesday as we get together for a little midweek Bible study and devotional time. I'm so glad that you've taken some time out of your day to join us to do just that and to dive into God's Word and see what He has to teach us and see what we can learn from Him as we grow in our relationship with Him and into the lives that He calls us to live. You know, I, I saw a church sign the other day. Uh, you know, churches have signs out in their their front or, or whatever it may be, uh, and uh, you know they, they put different little sayings and. Uh, pithy thoughts and things like that. And I, I saw one church sign that said, don't come, don't make me come down here, signed God. So God said, you know, don't, don't make me come down here. And it made me think of a, a couple of things. First, it made me think of my dad, right? And, and probably a lot of us can relate to this when I was young and, and my brother and I, we'd be fighting or arguing or, you know, acting up in the other room. And my dad would yell at us, don't make me come in there. Yes, that, um, that was the first thing I thought of. Uh, but then the other thing I thought of and I know that, that the sign is kind of meant in a, a negative way, don't make me come down there. But it also made me think of it in, in a more of a positive way, that, that God doesn't have to come down here, right? Because he already is here. And even more than that, as, as Christians, he's not just down here, but he is in here, as in in us you know, in Acts chapter 2, when Peter delivered that first gospel sermon on the day of Pentecost, he promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to all who would repent and be baptized. You know, that story in, in Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit of God comes down on, on those first apostles and, uh, and, and, and or the apostles and, and first disciples, and they start to preach the message of Jesus, and, and everybody is, is, is convicted. And so they ask, what do we have to do? And, and so Peter says, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's a promise that's made to all. And so all who give their life to Jesus and are baptized into him receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Meaning that as Christians, we have the Spirit of God, not just his, his presence around us, but we have the Spirit of God living inside of us and working through us. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, that anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God living in them, doesn't even belong to to him. And so it's not just a, a gift that we have, but it's a mark, a seal that we are his and that we are in him. And so all of us who are Christians have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And yet here's the sad reality. Not all who claim to be Christians truly show the influence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And I guess the question has to be, why is that? Well, there's probably more than a couple of reasons, but I think at the heart of it is something foundational that I think we can all comprehend and wrap our minds around. That's not just a, a spiritual truth, but it is a, a reality of this world that we live in, that while we can receive a gift, you and I can receive a gift, that doesn't mean that we open the gift or use the gift. For all practical purposes, it's like being given a tractor to plow a field and yet never using it. The power's there, right? We have, we have access to the power and yet it's not being used. And I think the problem arises when we fail to allow the Spirit to influence and reign over all of our lives instead of just a little bit here and a little bit there. We may have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, but just because we have the presence of the Spirit doesn't mean we are filled with the Spirit. Just because the Holy Spirit is living inside of us doesn't mean that He is reigning over us and through us. And Jesus gave a very clear way to determine whether the influence in a person's life was good or bad, whether whether it is spirit filled or it's more often than not me filled. He, he says in Luke chapter 6 verse 43, for no for no good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear bad fruit. In other words, fruit is the one thing that you look for in matters of judgment. And so what do we look for in spirit-filled Christians? What the Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, here, here's what we look for. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness, self-control. Paul says against such things there is no law. In other words, if you want to know if a life is truly filled with the Spirit, then use the yardstick of the Spirit's own words. If you don't see love and joy and peace and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control in that life, then, then you're probably not seeing a life producing the fruit of the Spirit. Mere words and declarations about what we are or aren't won't really prove anything. After all, right, a, a tree can easily be called an apple tree, but if it doesn't produce apples, then it's one of two things. Either it's an apple tree that fails to produce the fruit that it, it, it is, right? 
And Jesus tells us in another passage that it will be cut down and thrown into the fire, or it's not an apple tree, and calling it one isn't going to change that reality. Paul builds on these words just two verses later that we read in Galatians chapter 5. He builds on, on those words about what the fruit of the Spirit looks like by saying this in verse 25 of chapter 5 of Galatians. He says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's lead in every part of our lives. And may that mark us as well. May we do as Paul says and follow the Spirit's leading, not just in, in parts of our lives here or part here, but in every part of our lives. May, may he reign in every crevice, in every nook, in every cranny, as we like to say down south, in every room in our house. May we allow the Spirit to fill us and reign in our lives so that we will live in such a way that even our enemies cannot fail to see the fruit of the Spirit clearly exemplified in the lives of that we live. Hope you have a blessed day. God bless.